Hello and welcome to Cinema Burger. I'm Scott Burger and I bring you movie reviews from a different perspective. We continue with our Fast and the Furious series tonight with Fate of the Furious. Dom and Letty are on their honeymoon in Cuba and their cousin is there and he gets in a dispute with the local street racer there and it's up to Dom to save the day. Dom says he'll race the guy in the street race and it'll settle the score with the cousin. So the cousin has a really crappy looking car, it's the slowest car in Cuba, and the street racer has the fastest car. So obviously Dom is going to try to win. So Dom makes a makeshift Nas setup and pulls off anything off the car that's not necessary to lighten the car. The race begins as Letty drives ahead in a motorcycle to close off the streets. Dom uses a soda can lid to set up the Nas, which is silly to begin with, but... As the race goes on, the Cuban street racer is way out in front and Dom lets out the Nas. And since the engine is exposed, it's lighting up and it looks like it's going to explode. The Cuban street racer radios for a guy to throw a motorcycle at Dom. So once it hits Dom's car, it literally catches fire. So Dom is driving a car on fire. And this is just the opening scene of the movie. So at some point between Fast Five and Fate of the Furious, I think Dom sold his soul to the devil. How else would he be able to do all these dangerous stunts and survive? And you know what happens when you sell your soul to the devil? He will call upon you one day to become the spirit of vengeance, none other than Ghost Rider. Yes, so yes, Dom is Ghost Rider now. To be honest, Vin Diesel as Ghost Rider would be pretty cool, not gonna lie. So as Ghost Rider is driving his flaming car, he spins it backwards to somehow get more speed. So he wins the race somehow with his makeshift car on fire. He jumps out of it as it crashes into the side of the highway and falls in the water. And he wins the race and all of a sudden all of these children just show up around him and cheer him as though they could see everything that happened. So at least the opening scene of the movie was a street race again, just like Furious 7. Too bad it was the most ridiculous thing in the history of ever. So after the race, Dom is walking home with groceries and he sees a woman working on her car. The woman has long blonde dreadlocks and he offers her help. As he does, the woman says his name and talks about things like fate and how she wants Dom to work for her. He says no and the woman says that Dom is going to work for her, in fact, he's going to beg her too. He shows him a phone and as he looks at it he looks very troubled. The woman is played by Charlize Theron and she's pretty intimidating as she gives a cold calculating performance in this movie. So Dom is back at his hotel room and he gets a call from Hobbs about a job in Berlin. They need to steal some EMP device before it gets in the wrong hands. He agrees and then the scene cuts to this job mid-sequence. It's interesting to see one of the action scenes mid-progress without any explanation or exposition. As they're driving, Tej lets go a giant wrecking ball and Roman starts screaming as usual. The effects in this movie are a step up from the previous movie. Everything looks a lot more cleaner and sharp. So as this wrecking ball falls, it swings backwards and hits a bunch of cops who are tracing Dom and the crew. It clearly kills all of them and between Fast Five and now it seems like that Dom and the crew have killed at least over a hundred cops which would make them murderers, but that's none of my business. As they're driving away, Dom rams his car into Hobbs's car and knocks it over, and he steals the EMP device. So it appears that Dom has gone rogue, or on the side of evil now. His performance in this movie is very stoic and quiet, but he does a lot of facial acting, which is nice. So since this job was off the books, Hobbs goes to jail. So as Hobbs is brought to jail, we see Mr. Nobody, who offers to get him out of jail. But Hobbs wants to get out legally. Now, Mr. Nobody has a new apprentice named Little Nobody, and he's played by Scott Eastwood. Now, I feel like bringing in this character was a way to fill in the gap left by Paul Walker's absence and Brian O'Connor's character. So when Little Nobody says something Hobbs doesn't like, he literally breaks out of his own chains... So I guess it was pointless that he was chained up anyway if he could just break out of them. So we cut to a plane where Dom drove his car onto after stealing the EMP. And we meet Charlie Theron's character, whose name is Cypher. She is a cyber terrorist and the main villain for this movie. 
She has a henchman named Connor Rhodes, played by Christopher Hivju, also from Game of Thrones. So as Hobbs goes into the jail, we see Deckard Shaw, and the two exchange insults at each other and about how they're going to kill each other. They do have good banter and chemistry, but I feel like a lot of this movie is trying to set up those two characters for the future spin-off, Hobbs and Shaw. Now as the two are placed in opposite cells because coincidence, they start to exchange more banter between each other, and all of a sudden, the jail cells open. Deckard escapes immediately, and Hobbs stays there because he doesn't want to get in trouble. But then he goes after Shaw. Now, this scene is pretty well choreographed. Director F. Gary Gray is the director of Fate of the Furious, and he can shoot action pretty well as also. And he also uses a 180-degree camera flip when someone gets thrown down again, and it still looks pretty cool. But before that, some of their banter includes how they're going to beat each other up, and the Hobbs actually lifts a stone bench out of the wall and starts benching it like it's weights. Now, we've shown that he can just throw stone objects around, so this isn't anything new. But as they're talking about how they're going to beat each other up, Hobbs says his most stupid line of the movie so far, that he is going to beat Shaw's ass like a Cherokee drum. Now, funny? Yes. Is that racist? Also yes. Now, as Hobbs is going after Shaw, he is attacked by multiple guards and inmates. And he's throwing them around like they're twigs, and he gets shot by multiple rubber bullets, and he is fine. Now, if you get shot by rubber bullets, it's going to leave a big bruise or permanent damage. But I guess since you're the rock, you're impervious. So I guess rock beats rubber. Now, back on Cypher's plane, she tries to dissect Dom and talks about what makes him tick. She says that he lives by his own rules and is truly an outlaw and is free. But she asks him what he believes in and he says family. And she says, no, that makes you a prisoner. Your real freedom is when you're in that car for 10 seconds driving that quarter mile. And what it would be like to feel like that all of the time. She is trying to tempt Dom to the dark side, so to say, and he's really conflicted, but whatever Cypher has on Dom, he can't escape or leave her. Now as Hobbs and Shaw both get out of the prison, Mr. Nobody is waiting there. It seems this was all set up by Mr. Nobody to get them both out of prison. Now as they get back to Mr. Nobody's base, the rest of the team is there and they're trying to figure out what to do next. He explains who Cypher is and what she does. She is the most powerful villain the team has ever faced. Now, now Roman says that what would Brian do in this situation and Letty says can't bring Brian and Mia back into this life. They left it for good. Now this is good here because they're not trying to bring back these characters even though Paul Walker is dead but Brian O'Connor is not, but they're trying to leave him alone, and it's tasteful. So then Mr. Nobody says, that's why I brought in an extra pair of hands, and Deckard Shaw comes in the room. It turns out that he has to work with Hobbs and the rest of the team. Now, everyone is reluctant, and they should be, because just one movie ago, Deckard killed Han, and the wounds are still fresh. So as Mr. Nobody is explaining who Cypher is, Deckard says that she tried to recruit him for her team, to steal the god's eye and stuff like that, and that she corrupted Owen Shaw and made him who he was. So now this is crucial plot point here because this makes Cypher the mastermind behind Owen Shaw and the previous couple movies. Now it turns out that Letty knows who Connor Rhodes is because he asked Owen to steal those military devices from Fast and the Furious 6 and that it was thwarted, and then in Furious 7, Cypher sent in that warlord to steal God's Eye, so that's twice now that Dom and the team had thwarted Cypher's plans. So by extension, since Owen Shaw influenced Braga, that Cypher has been responsible for the last four movies of Adversaries. And now this is pretty interesting, it's setting up a whole mastermind behind everything that's been going on. So Fate of the Furious takes a step in a better direction than its predecessor, Furious 7, because it focuses more on 
plot and character development better than Furious 7 did. It's showing how the team can't stop Dom because he's the most powerful of them. And this is a step up from Furious 6 where they fight their doppelgangers. So they're truly fighting someone who is like them and someone they never expected to have to fight. So Cypher now needs to steal Russian launch codes because, sure, and she sends Dom to New York to go get them. Dom refuses and Cypher says that she needs to remind him of why he's here. We cut to a dark room and there's a glass chamber and we see Elena laying in a bed. Now why would Elena be there? That's weird. And then all of a sudden we see a baby. Apparently Elena and Dom had a child between Furious 6 and now. Now I was not expecting this at all. This is pretty crucial and is the whole reason Dom must agree to work for Cypher. Now Elena explains when Dom found out Letty was alive that's when she was pregnant and that she didn't tell anybody. Now when Letty and Dom went on their honeymoon Cypher kidnapped Elena so they had no idea that there was a baby. Now it's been about four years since Fast and the Furious 6 so I feel like Elena should have told Dom about their child but she must be the coolest person in the world that she let Dom go back to Letty and also didn't have to worry about raising his child. But of course he is now because he knows that he exists. So as the team is getting ready to go find Dom in New York, they go to Mr. Nobody's warehouse and they get all a bunch of cars and tanks and things like that. Now Hobbs starts talking to Shaw and looking up his personal military record. Now it seems that he got lots of medals of honor and stuff and that him going rogue doesn't make sense. Now the two are laughing together and they seem to be friends. Now we shouldn't be accepting Shaw so easily. He still killed Han in the last movie and he attacked the entire team. But it's been one movie later and now they're all friends it seems and that really pisses me off. Well this is happening for two reasons. One they're trying to set up the Hobbs and Shaw movie, and two, the Fast and the Furious series has a track record of having previous antagonists become allies. But having Hobbs become an ally and having Shaw become an ally are two different things, because Hobbs was a cop and he didn't kill anybody, he was just looking up names on a list. Just like when Deckard was looking up names on a list, so he had no connection to them. But Deckard killed people in cold blood. He didn't even know who Han was, he just killed him because he apparently helped attack Owen. Now they're trying to allude to the fact that Cypher also framed Deckard Shaw and messed up his record too. So we've been seeing this happier side of Deckard, but it still is drilling in my head. You killed Han in the last movie. You killed Han. Stop accepting him. So we cut to Dom, he's driving in the empty streets of New York because every major city has empty streets. That's another issue with action movies and car chases in cities. But he steps on a pedal next to the gas pedal and his car starts to stall out. He goes to check under the hood and Cypher gets mad at him and is mad that she can't see Dom on any cameras. Now in these five minutes that Dom has to fix the car, he goes to a bar and he meets up with this woman and it turns out to be Helen Mirren. Now he talks about making a deal with her and he gives her some sort of watch looking device and says that if you help me I'll help you. So we don't know what this deal is or what's going on but they finish talking and Dom gets back to his car. So we see the rest of the team and they're trying to find Dom. Now Dom is after this Russian convoy that has someone with the nuclear launch codes. Now to create a diversion, Cypher and her team remotely hack a bunch of cars in the city. Now she sends what looks like a thousand cars that are ghost driving after Hobbs and everyone else. Now there's so many cars crashing and falling in the scene even Michael Bay would have to stop masturbating from all the mayhem. Now there's one scene where a motor cop on a bike hits a car and if you really freeze frame and look it's a dummy that falls off of the bike and it's really like noticeable and it's ridiculous. 
so once the team finds Dom and his car, they corner him at an intersection and they all shoot harpoons at Dom's car. So that's Hobbs, Shaw, Mr. Little Nobody, Roman, and Letty. So that's five cars pulling on Dom's car. Now they're trying to stop him and slow him down, and Dom's car is still resisting. As they're pulling in with their harpoons, all their wheels start to catch fire, and it's a pretty cool looking effect. So Dom actually knocks out his left door, that sends Hobbs' car flying. He backs up, sending Shaw's car off of him, and also Roman's. And then he still has Letty and Tej's car attached to him, and he backs up and it flips both cars at him. So Dom is so skilled at driving that he took out five cars alone. And honestly, it's pretty impressive. It's showing how strong Dom is, and if he were to be a villain, that he is pretty unstoppable. So this is good character development here. Now while Fate of the Furious has fewer action scenes, that's good, because they feel more deserved after all the plot and character development. Furious 7 just from one action scene to the next without a lot of plot and it felt like it was lacking something. So after the ca thousand car crash orgy, Dom gets out of his car and heads toward the Russian guy with the launch codes. He has on armor this metal black mask and some sort of riot shield and Buzzsaw. He looks like a heavy attacker from a video game, and also he looks like Jason from Jason X. But he saws the car in half, gets the launch codes, and walks away. So both Shaw and Letty go after Dom, and Shaw catches up to Dom first. He talks about, you thought this was going to be a street fight, referencing the last movie, and Dom shoots Shaw. Now he's dead, and now Letty sees this and goes after Dom. Letty catches up and says, you're not going to kill me. Now Connor Rhodes shows up to make sure that they get the nuclear codes. And Connor points a gun at Letty because she got the nuclear device from Dom. And Dom points a gun at Connor because he doesn't want anything to happen to Letty. Now he's showing his weakness for family in Cypher's eyes. And Cypher is really pissed about this. Now Letty gives Connor the device and both him and Dom leave and they go back to the Cypher's plane. So Cypher yells at Dom that he almost let Letty get away and that his weakness for family is his biggest downfall. Now she needs to punish Dom for his transgression. So she goes to the box with Elena and their son and Connor is there and Dom says what are you doing stop and Connor shoots Elena I was not expecting this, so the mother of his child is dead, and Cypher says, next time you mess up, we kill your son. Now Dom is really pissed off. Throughout the movie, Dom has been talking about how you shouldn't keep your foot on the tiger's neck, referring to Dom as a wild animal, and this is another reference to caged animals like in Furious 7. And now Dom is really upset here. He does a lot of acting facially and not by talking, which is tough because he's Vin Diesel. But there is a lot of good character moments in this movie. So now that Cypher has the nuclear launch codes, they have to go to Russia to steal a nuclear sub. This sounds like something out of James Bond, but this movie has become James Bond essentially. Now they're need this sub to blow up the world basically because Cypher talks about the reason she's doing everything is the world needs to be held accountable or some bullshit like that you know generic bad guy stuff but it's the way she goes about doing it and getting people to work for her is what makes her interesting as well as Charlize Theron's performance so Dom shows up in Russia and he's waiting for Cypher's orders Hobbs, Letty, and the crew are driving souped-up vehicles. Hobbs has this truck with, like, a snowplow on it. Roman picks a Lamborghini because he's Roman. And Tej has a tank, which is pretty cool, because it can drive, like, 70 miles an hour. 
And they basically have to break in and stop Cypher from stealing this sub. They end up having to go into it and pull out a device that stops it from working. And throughout this, there's the Russian guards watching this base with the sub. Now, Letty is fighting off trained Russian guards. Now, she doesn't have any former training either, because she grew up on the streets. Maybe she learned some stuff with when she was working with Owen Shaw, but she should not be able to take out trained Russian guards. Now, it just proves how much of a badass Letty and, by extension, Michelle Rodriguez is. So during the chase scenes on the ice with Hobbs and his the crew and the Russian soldiers, there's a lot of good slow-mo shots that F. Gary Gray uses. Now, this is a good way to use slow motion. Also, this scene on the ice feels like the movie Die Another Day. So during this ice chase scene, Roman's car gets almost hit with a missile and Roman's car falls in the ice. As his car is filling with water, he climbs out. Now, he would die of hypothermia in like three seconds because that water is probably below freezing. So apparently the Fast and the Furious characters are impervious to cold now too. So since Cypher has lost control of the sub because they took out the remote device that the nuclear launch codes control, she's trying to activate the sub by hacking it. Now Ramsey is there too to also hack, so they're having a hacking battle and they ultimately shut down the sub, but Cypher gets really pissed off and just launches the sub after Hobbs and the rest of them. So now they're all running away from Russian guards with missile trucks and now there is a nuclear sub chasing them. Remember when these movies were about street racing and stealing DVD players? Yeah, me neither. So while Dom is waiting, Connor is with him to make sure Dom doesn't slip up like last time. And Connor is going to shoot the team because they escaped with the device stopping the sub and they're being chased by Russian guards. Now Connor is going to shoot Letty and Dom makes him miss. Now we cut to Cypher's plane and we see two masked people flying in on sky suits landing on the plane. Now, one of them takes off their mask, and it's Deckard Shaw. It turns out he wasn't killed. There's a flashback of after he supposedly got shot by Dom that he gets help from Helen Mirren, who turns out to be Deckard Shaw's mother. So, that's interesting. We've introduced another member of Shaw's family, and that they want revenge on Cypher. Now, the second hooded figure is Owen Shaw, and he's still kind of scarred, so Owen Shaw made a recovery, and he wants revenge on Cypher for corrupting him and going down the path that he did. So yes, Dom got Shaw's mother to get both Deckard and Owen to help him. Now their mission is to steal back Dom's son so that Cypher doesn't have a hold on Dom anymore. The only way they could find Cypher because her plane is untraceable is with a homing device. The little watch that Dom gave Shaw's mother was a tracker and he actually put a tracking device in his cross necklace. So that's pretty smart on Dom's part and that's a lot of misdirection twists and turns which is like in Fast Five with all the misdirection. So that's a nice reference there and upping the ante there. So Owen Shaw goes to the pilots to make sure they don't go off course, and Deckard has Dom's child now. So now, here comes one of the most silliest but fun fight sequences in the whole movie. Basically, Deckard is fighting off multiple guards while holding Dom's baby in this basket. Now, he puts headphones on the baby so he doesn't hear any of the violence and grow up to become Dexter Morgan and the baby is reacting to things happening so he turns the baby away when there's violence and it's just ridiculous and he's like being very cute and cuddly to the baby now once again this is the same guy who murdered Han in the last movie and was trying to kill everybody but now he's helping out by saving babies so while the Shaw brothers are on the plane, Cypher is still trying to take down 
the rest of the team. Now once Dom knows that his son is safe, Dom is free to go back to the side of good. He kills Connor Rhodes and goes to drive down to help the rest of the team on the ice. Okay, so at one point, Cypher shoots a torpedo and Hobbs gets out of his car as it's coming toward everybody and literally turns the torpedo away. So he's strong enough to stop a torpedo now. He first starts by hitting the missile truck and causing it to shoot all the other cars that are after them. And while the sub is still attacking them, Cypher has shot a heat-seeking missile at Dom and everybody else. Now, Dom drives up ahead because he has some weird engine thing that shoots out flames. So he jumps the car at this nuclear sub and hitting it on the side and then the missile turns around and blows up the sub. So Dom has now taken out a nuclear sub. You can add that to his list of impossible shit that he's done in these movies. So as he lands and crashes his car as the sub is exploding, all the rest of the cars driven by Letty, Tej, and Hobbs form like a human shield out of cars around Dom to protect him from the fire. Now that's not even necessary because he's Ghost Rider, he's fireproof anyway. But if Dom wasn't Ghost Rider he would have been killed anyway, but we've proven before that he's been fireproof. So with Dom's son saved and all the guards taken out, Deckard finds the room where Cypher is in. She wants to take her out for good but Cypher shoots the airlock and is going to shoot the baby because there's only one parachute and Deckard has to choose between saving the baby and going after Cypher. Now he chooses the baby of course and Cypher has the only parachute and jumps out of the plane and this is the last we see of Cypher for the rest of the movie. So now everyone regroups in a New York penthouse. Mr. Nobody and Little Nobody are there with Dom, Hobbs, Letty, and everybody else. And then they're all congratulating each other and laughing, and then Deckard Shaw walks in with Dom's son. He gives him to Dom, and they both shake hands and hug each other, and it seems like they're all friends now. But apparently Dom forgot that in the last movie that Deckard Shaw killed Han, and they make an emphasis on it because they show that scene in Fast and the Furious 6, and then they show it in Furious 7 to prove that Deckard Shaw was behind the killing of Han. So how can Dom just call Deckard Shaw family when he killed another family member in the previous movie? Now you can't blame Deckard Shaw killing Han on Cypher. Cypher didn't force Deckard to go after the team that took out Owen. That was of his own volition. Now obviously they did this to make Deckard a good guy so they could have the Hobbs and Shaw movie and because Jason Statham and Dwayne Johnson had good chemistry together. But that still doesn't excuse the fact that he killed Han. I will keep saying this. He killed Han. Justice for Han. So after now that I've gotten over the fact that Deckard Shaw killed Han, only briefly, Dom makes a toast and that he needs to give his son a name. Elena had given the son a middle name, but she said that his father should name him. And of course, he names his son Brian, which is very touching and fitting. And Dom says that his son Brian has a lot of people to meet now. So that's the end of Fate of the Furious. It's definitely an improvement over Furious 7. It had less action scenes while all of them were over the top. There was only three as opposed to like five or six in Furious 7. The movie has a lot of good character development in terms of Dom being forced to be a bad guy and work for Cypher, and Cypher was trying to challenge Dom's morals. Now, Cypher being the mastermind behind the last few villains is also really cool, and she'll definitely be a villain in the future movies. But I still can't get over the fact that everybody welcomes Deckard Shaw so easily after he killed Han. Han was the most non-violent person in Dom's crew, and Deckard didn't even know him, and he killed him in cold blood. And that I cannot excuse. Now, weighing all of those options and statistics together, 
I think I'm going to have to give Fate of the Furious two and a half burgers out of five. It's a step up above Furious 7, but it's still a completely unnecessary movie. And it has a lot of implausibilities in the world of Fast and the Furious. We start out with stealing DVD players and we've worked our way up to fighting off Russian soldiers and destroying nuclear submarines. Now it was a really cool twist to introduce Dom and Elena had a child and that Dom is a father now. Now killing off Elena was also really cruel but also necessary. And Charlie Theron does a great performance as Cypher. So, as I said before, I already reviewed Hobbs and Shaw in a written review, but I'm going to briefly talk about it in another video along with the Netflix cartoon Fast and the Furious Spy Racers. And I'm also going to briefly talk about the Fast and Furious 9 trailer because this movie was supposed to come out in April, but due to COVID-19 it got pushed back till 2021. So that was Fate of the Furious. It's definitely still over the top, but a little improved. I'm Scott Berger, and I'll see you next time.